Guruji, what is the significance of linga? The word linga literally means the form. Form means, why we are calling it the form is, when, you know today modern science is proving to you beyond any doubt that the whole existence is coming from nothing and going back to nothingness. You know this? There was a time when modern science believed everything comes from something, you can neither destroy something nor create something. It can only be transformed from one state to another. You cannot destroy anything nor can you create anything. That was the belief some time ago. But today modern science is proving beyond any doubt that everything comes from nothingness and goes back to nothingness. A whole bunch of galaxies sometimes just collapse into themselves and become nothing, you know? There's something called as black holes. Some of them explode into supernovas, but a lot of them just collapse into themselves and become nothing. So there was something and it became nothing. Similarly, there is nothingness and it becomes somethingness. Nothingness is the very basis of all that is something in the creation, please see. Only because there is a vast nothingness, somethingness has happened in the form of tiny galaxies. If you look up, at it, look up in the sky, generally the way your vision is made is, you think it's full of stars, but that's not the reality. The reality is there's a vast empty space, just tiny spots of stars. Isn't it? That's a reality. But because of the way your vision is made, because of a visual deception, it makes you feel as if the sky is full of stars. The sky is full of emptiness, just a little bit of stars, just a little bit of salt and pepper. Rest is all darkness and emptiness. So everything springs from that and goes back to that. When the unmanifest m begins to move towards the manifest, when the first manifestation begins, the first form that the energy takes is the form of an ellipsoid. You know what's an ellipsoid? A perfect three-dimensional ellipse is an ellipsoid. The first form is always a perfect ellipsoid. A perfect ellipsoid is what is being referred to as a linga. This we have always known. Yoga has always been saying this. Every human being who's gone deep enough into himself has always known this. But today, modern cosmologists have taken pictures of various galaxies and they say the core of every galaxy is an ellipsoid. Do you know this? No? The core of every galaxy, if you take pictures of it, is always an ellipsoid. So the first form that the unmanifest, when it begins to manifest, it takes the form of an ellipsoid. If you become meditative to a point where you become loose with your body, then you will notice once again your energies become an ellipsoid. That means before dissolution, the final form that you take also is an ellipsoid. So the first form is an ellipsoid, the fi final form is an ellipsoid. So linga is seen as a doorway. Either way, either this way or that way, it is a doorway to the beyond. If we take any form, suppose if you give me anything, Let's say you give me this flower. You hold this flower in your hand, feel it, if you're sensitive to it, and give it to me. I'll just hold it in my hand just for 10, 20 seconds and give it to you. You will see it'll feel very different. I will make this flower feel very, very different in your hand because I'll energize this in such a way that it will be vibrant in your hands. But this flower cannot retain it for too long. After some time, It'll be just a piece of organic material. But if you form a perfect ellipsoid, if you form a linga the way it should be and energize it, it'll be a perennial storehouse of energy. There is a whole science as to how to build a linga. 
the different dimensions, the different qualities that you can attribute to it. It is just that this science, which is very essential and very fundamental science, has been lost to some extent or to a large extent because the bhakti movement swept the country about seven hundred, eight hundred years ago. The bhaktas took over temple building. So the science of how to make it, they dropped it because for a bhakta, bhakta means a devotee, a devotee is not interested in any science. It is just the strength of his emotion. Hmm? Isn't it? <laughs> you know. Just simple strength of emotion. He is not interested in any science. So when devotees started building temples, they started building it whichever way they like. It's their love affair. You know, no rules, no science, no nothing. Their love affair just made them do lingas whichever way they feel like it. So, the science of making it sort of receded. But if it is properly made, it can be such a powerful energy form that people can experience it in an enormous way. It can be a great tool of transformation for people. Have you sat there for some time, in, any of you? You should just sit there, don't believe any nonsense. Simply sit there, don't think of Shiva and all this business. Simply just sit there without any prejudice about it, without any beliefs about it, just sit there. It will shake you from the root of your spine. It will just set forth a completely different process within you. Without a single instruction, you will be initiated into a very powerful process in the presence of the Analinga. <clears throat> That's too much behind it. Huh? Let's not go at it now. <laughs> Those of you who want to know much more about it, you, most of you have the mystics' musings. Hmm? The last chapter is all about Dhyanalinga. 